for Beal and do one for him. So that's it. This is Virtue and Vice brand of wrestling here on the big vetobrand.com. Thanks for listening and watching. We'll see you next time. Thinking like Austria or Germany sounds like sound of music. What about you, Big Downtown New Jersey. Let's sing a song about New Jersey. Very specific. Every, Every time I say Jersey. something, I get in trouble. I didn't say anything. I just narrated the fact that you said downtown New Jersey, a very specific location where food box that's foods from around the world. Make their nest in the garden state. Horses on the farms, horses at the gate. They're working a race in the garden state. The honeybee's job is to pollinate the beautiful plants of the garden state. So the violet flower can permeate the fields and trails of the garden state. New Jersey. Welcome, everyone, back, finally, to another edition of Virtue and Vice, brand of wrestling, right here on the BigVitoBrand.com. And I am Virtue, once again, being joined by the remarkable Robbie Vice. What's up, Rob? Uh, it's good to be remarkable. It's good to be... Good to be the smartest guy in the room again. Um, obviously, we're not in the same room, Virtue. I know that's the caveat you gave me when I when I took this moniker, so that's fine. But uh, really good to be back. A lot of NXT news, and I know you want to talk about some NXT stuff. So, man, why don't we yeah. jump right into this? Uh, by the way, before we get started, how are you feeling, man? I know you had a, kind of a rough weekend. You know, I bring Big Vito up. I, I do. We do the show for his channel, for his Twitch, for his website. Right. I bring him up here from Orlando. Flight. Um, Marriott, right? He's having a, we go to a Cavs game. I saw, he's yeah. supposed to enhance my army at the, at the indie wrestling show. And what does he decide to do? Be all baby, baby. And when he sees me throwing in a foreign object, right? When the ref wasn't looking, right? If the ref doesn't see it, anything goes. That's my mentality. Right. And he's like, we don't do business that way. And he's, he pulled me down from the apron. I smashed my face on it. Then he pulled me down so hard, this this Italian idiot. I jumped backwards into the guardrail, and I'm hurting. I got marks on my back. I mean, he literally brought me to tears. And this isn't. I mean, this isn't a. This isn't a work. This is. This is real life. Vito, you're an asshole. Okay. And I hope the next show we're at together, you're gonna pay the price, bro. So anyway, let's talk about NXT. I don't want to talk about Vito. You know, all that stuff I did for him, all that stuff, and. This is how he treats me, Rob. I don't appreciate it, but whatever. NXT. Since the Survivor Series, it actually won the ratings a couple of weeks. I guess right. this past Wednesday, it, AEW technically won, but it's close now. It's close, Rob. But here's the deal. We've talked about AEW at nauseum. The things we like, like Jericho. A lot of things that we don't like, right? Women's Division, Orange Cassidy, Marco Stunt, Joey Janela. NXT. Let's talk about some things we like about NXT. Uh, you know, we always say who could become the next big star. And I, I want to say for the last three or four years, like they, the people that come up from NXT just aren't getting that treatment. I mean, I would say Kevin Owens made it to the main event. You know, sure. go back further, right? Still when it was kind of FCW NXT, Bray Wyatt came up, Seth Rollins, The Shield. But I just feel like we don't get those big main roster stars from it anymore. Is there anybody on the roster right now? I mean, we got to see them battle the main roster. Right. So we should have, you know, some of these talents through the course of these appearances on Raw and SmackDown and Survivor Series, and I know you're going to have one, had to have stuck out. So who do you think could become something? And, and how can they get him there from NXT onto the main roster? And, and I mean like a draw. I mean like somebody you will remember forever. Do we have anybody like that? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think we're looking at the beginnings of it with Keith Lee. I I mean, this guy, he he's a big guy. He moves like Vader. Uh, he's pretty good on the stick. And this guy, man, he he oozes charisma. So, 
he is what they wish he's he has the personality they wished like Braun Strowman or Vader had back in the day. Um, I, I just think that this guy needs a rocket strapped to him and he's going places, man. The facials are great. His ring psychology is great. Um, he's, he's, he's powerful. And, and I don't know if that would be taken away a little bit on the main roster where guys are a little bit bigger, but man, that sit down power bomb that he gave the NXT champion was just such an impactful move. And I feel that he's such a unique character in NXT, but man, his charisma and I think everything else about this guy could take him to the main roster. And with the right push, I think this guy is the next big thing. Now I'm feeling you there, but like, I have to like interject, like, I feel like they had they've had this guy for a while, not named Keith Lee on the main roster that I want to see this push to, and it's Big E. Sure. Right? Now, again, some similarities, a lot of differences. So I, I feel like this is what rubbed me the wrong way. When I see main roster superstars that they never truly give that main event push, and then like somebody like Keith Lee comes along, and if he does get it, it's like how how do they pick and choose? Like, you know what I mean? It's always been a weird question. Like, we know I like Matt Riddle. Right? right, Matt Riddle is yeah. trying to do business for himself and set up a future main roster match against Goldberg. Even if he gets beat, right, that's still prime time for him. So, but can he offer more beyond that? I don't know. Velveteen Dream's another guy. Like, I really want to bring him up. Like you brought Keith Lee up. Yes, he's injured right now. This guy's been in NXT for like three years, four oh, years. Yeah. Like, this guy to me screams everything Vince McMahon would want to see in it, like with the flamboyance and charisma. Like, why in the hell, unless, like I've said before, he's Vince McMahon's secret weapon and Vince is just milking it because he's early 20s, mid 20s. But like, sure. when do these, when's the right time for anybody that we, Riddle, Keith Lee, uh, Velveteen Dream, for them to get this push? Because I think if you're going to make a big star, you can't just have NXT stars debut on the main roster. You have to have them like Kevin Owens did against John Cena. You have to have that. So I, I think I and I think it's the biggest problem with WWE right now is I think you need to have a linear path to to the main roster and to um, and championships on the main roster. I, I think they should win the North American title or NXT tag titles. They need to branch off and have a singles at some point and they need to be a credible NXT champion. The next thing, it would be a cool tradition to have either both an NXT participant in the Royal Rumble every year and money in the bank, give them away every couple of years. If they got a guy who's really special, they could come in and win one of those events. But I think the caveat would have to be, they would need to be NXT champion before they do that. They need to be a proven credible uh, performer. And obviously Vince isn't going to do anything with people. He doesn't feel comfortable with or thinks he can rely on. So I think having them go up through that NXT chain all the way up to the very top, establish dominance, and win a Royal Rumble, win a Money in the Bank. It gives them credibility. It gives them a reason to be there instead of just them showing up out of the blue. And since they've already won those big matches against other big-name top stars, I think that gives them the credibility they would need to start a good foundation for a good run on the main roster. Now, I like that, how you suggested maybe have them be the NXT champion. What I would like, this is what they always failed to do. They would have somebody be the NXT champion. And when you knew that it was time for them to get called up after Mania, they would lose that NXT championship right. so they didn't bring it with them. Why do they have to lose it? Can't they get called to the main roster and then establish themselves? And then if they have to relinquish that title, you can do a tournament. Like, you know what I mean? I don't sure. want to see yeah, these King people of, lose. King of the Ring would be great in NXT. Yes, and I, I don't want to see these people lose that title to get right. pushed. Now, here's an interesting one. Do you think the same thing can be applied to the women? You, you're loving the women's division right now Absolutely. in NXT. But could that same thing apply? And the reason why I'm asking, look at Asuka. Um, look at Kyrie Sane. I mean, look at the, the females that have come up since the original Four Horsewomen. And even then, what have they really done with Sasha and, and Bailey? The, the one person, you know, Charlotte and Becky, obviously, two yeah. top stars, but Sasha and Bailey, like, yo-yoing. Uh, the one person that always surprised me from NXT was Alexa Bliss. She basically, yeah. early on, she got a push quicker than some of the others, and no one expected that. But today's women's division now in NXT, as great as it is, I think that any one of them would get lost with the women's division because I just don't think they're as dedicated to the main roster women as they say they are without Ronda Rousey in the house. So what do you think with that? I think Rousey could be key for some of these NXT girls uh, to yeah. come back to the main roster or up to the main roster. Oh, but for like, sure. 
What do you think with this? I, I think I, the women kind of have to stay in NXT, but it, it's the weird. women. So yes, that's that's where they're going to build their chops. It it just depends on how Vince sees you. I, you know, some of these people get called up. These ladies get called up. Uh, Charlotte, Becky, Bailey, uh, basically the the horse women of wrestling, right? They they get consistent pushes. They get their due. Uh, Alexa Bliss uh, and to a lesser extent Nikki Cross have had some success on the main roster as well. I, I just don't think they have. They're not dedicating enough time to the women right now, and I think that's because people. While Becky got look, who who's the hottest woman in the women's division right now? It's it's kind of cooled off a lot. They kind of. I, I think Becky was getting too big for her britches. Not in my opinion, Dude, but you know probably, who it is like right now. Seriously, it's not main roster women. It's probably Shayna Baszler just because she's been dominant, right, holding her title. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but I, I think after Becky got cooled off, I think it, it took a lot of steam out of the entire division. Becky two belts, she was going out doing her best Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonation. I think once that once that failed and once that was ended, um, it just, you know, we, do we really want to see Becky Charlotte 10? You know, it's, it's kind of like the, the Randy Orton, John Cena thing. It's just I, I don't I don't want to see it anymore. So um, the best the best wrestling and and the best women's wrestling. These are these are not exclusive to each other is on NXT and it's the women's division. Uh, it's the most consistently booked. It's building new stars. Rhea Ripley. You got some just incredible talent. The best women's wrestling is happening in NXT. And that might be the one. Rhea Ripley could be the one. I she's know what, she's 23? still twenty-three. She still has some, like you said, growth in NXT. But yeah. like when I look at star power type, I I could see her coming and being a dominant presence on the main roster. With yeah. maybe like Vince McMahon. Again, it all goes through Vince, right? He right. has to be the one to allow it. Anybody else like from the women in NXT uh, besides Sh- her? Shayna, Shayna Baszler, obviously. I think. And I see the thing with Shayna though is I think she's someone that should stay in NXT for a while because yeah. I don't I don't know how that unstoppable gimmick works when you run into Charlotte Flair or you run into Becky and you run into the redheaded stepchild of that group Bailey because I think she's probably the most disrespected out of all the four horsewomen. Um, but I, I just I don't know if they have enough time on the main roster. They they should because they air a lot of garbage. We're not going to deny that. WWE is so stupid. Like they put that match on last at, at Survivor Series, right? And it and it yeah. fell flat. Yeah. All they had to do, they could have worked that same match the same way with the same moves. All WWE had to do was say, "We need this to be two, two, two going into the main event." So the winner of this women's match wins right. the night. Yeah, like, well, how did they better. not? Russo said that. so many people. Vito said that. So many people said that. How do they not think of it? Just a year prior, Raw swept SmackDown 4-0. So it's not like you just came off of a Survivor Series that came down to the end. Right. I, I do not understand how they could not book it. I didn't even think of that. That's a good point. And that's that same match, and it, it probably would have looked even better because the girls would have felt the crowd because the crowd would have oh, had something yeah. to care for. And then they might have had more, you know, because when you're feeling the crowd. That extra gear, that, the HBK factor, right? How do they not do that? Like, I, 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 feel, yeah. I felt so bad for the women. Shane, especially since she went over, because they didn't set the table for them that way. It's a really good point, man. I, I didn't even think of that. And now that you say it, you're right. That's all it took. Simple, simple math. Two, good two storytelling. Two. Shocking. And, you know, of course, at one point, I'm like, oh, this match is last because, oh, the Ronda's coming back. She's coming or, back, or right? someone's coming, going to debut. Yeah, and if you're not going to do that, but again, I digress. Um, I do like the new... Um, uh, What's her name? Io Shirai. Like, oh, yeah. she's really... But again, I, I feel bad for the Japanese girls because when they make it to the main roster, I mean, yeah, okay, you, you do have... Um, are the Kabuki Warriors tag champs now, I believe? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, and, and Asuka's getting the miss... Get, Eventually, the miss, after the a year, they'll give you a tag title. But, but, like, I feel like, you know, she could be so cool, Io Shirai in NXT right now, but she makes the main roster, and it's like, okay, right. Vince doesn't see it in you. Um, it's just weird, like... I wouldn't be opposed to, especially right now, when Ronda, if Ronda Rousey comes back. I mean, first of all, she was supposed to have kids. Where's the pregnancy rumors? Somebody like Ronda Rousey gets pregnant, we're going to hear about it. So clearly, <laughs> I think she just wanted the time off. I think maybe when she comes back, we know it's inevitable, her and Becky. If she does come back, probably Mania. But I think it would be cool to see Ronda show up in NXT. I mean, we all know they want to beat AEW every week. Have Ronda come. Have Ronda Shana? come back just to, yeah. I mean, and it, that could lead to Ronda and Becky somehow. But right, yeah. 
But why not? I mean, we're talking about NXT, and Ronda's the big household name that earned the women to get the main event at WrestleMania. Let's face it, does that happen if Ronda's not there? No. They probably would have still done Evolution, but would it have felt as big if Ronda wasn't there? I mean, she was a mainstream no. star. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't happen without Ronda Rousey. Absolutely not. Any sleepers in NXT? Um, I like that. Uh, I always know, know him as Dijak, but I think it's Dijakovic. I was I literally going to say that. That was exactly and, what I was going to say. And he had a great series of matches where it went, you know, 50-50 booking. But in that case, it was okay against Keith Lee for several weeks. Yeah, and, and they had a really good dynamic where they had to team up. And they have that little that little pseudo faction with with Champa, him and Dijakovic, and now and and that that's so cool too. Is is Lee and Champa now are almost at odds because they're in this triple threat match for the and for the number one contender spot. Uh, but dude, Dijakovic, he's a legit six seven. Again, I I, I want to say, does this guy get taken away a little bit though on the main roster where people are larger? But even on the main roster, man, six seven's pretty big because Randy Orton looks like a giant compared yeah, to all Yeah, I mean, guys. And, and Bar- that's about Baron Corbin's size, and you yeah. know what I mean. Like, there's not that many large wrestlers these days, so I think I think he could sustain that. Now, what do you think of the whole Ronaldo, uh, Mauro Ronaldo taking a couple of shows off with the Corey Graves stuff? We talked about it over on the No DQ review. Right. And look, when when you do MMA bo- MMA and boxing, you have a good following. You're credible. Um, to me there's always a lead announcer. So like if Beth Phoenix is there and Nigel McGinnis, they're color commentators. So, you know, I have to believe maybe Corey Graves was trying to work an angle for NXT Survivor Series stuff. And he's a main roster announcer and he was trying to create some animosity. But like, aren't you supposed to smarten the other guy up? I mean, if if that was the case. Or is Graves just a dick? What do you think? I mean, Graves could have put just uh, pulled a big veto and just been a dick for no reason, uh, you know. But... Uh, again, and I'm going to echo a little bit what I said on the No DQ review is I think Corey Graves is talented. I think he's a good announcer. I just think I think he he's he's young. He has a lot of money. He literally has millions of people that listen to him weekly. And I think he, his ego maybe got the best of him and he decided to be unprofessional and stupid. Um, it, it was kind of a dick move because even though he may have been just trying to do something going into business for himself, whatever the case is, I, I don't really know. But knowing what Morrow goes through and everything like that i just think it's 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 cruel i think it's bottom line it's cruel it, it should have been said and if you're going to say something like this to someone like mauro ranallo first of all as the kids would say put some respect on that name did i do that right is that is that how you say things like that Thanks. but right yeah i don't know i'm old i don't know but at the, you, you have to involve a guy like this because of the danger and and how does this make you look especially when you have the whole anti-bullying campaign that wwe does it's just it's it's questionable and the way he apologized was Man, it was kind of a bitch move. I mean, right? It, it wasn't. It's not. It's human to human. You apologize to someone's face. You apologize and make it sincere. You don't apologize as a knee jerk reaction to backlash because, first of all, that says that your opinion and your thoughts weren't genuine to begin with, and that you're you don't have a spine to admit when you've made a mistake. So, I, I think respect wise, I've lost a little bit for Corey Graves. But again, I will not take away his skill and ability. I just hope he makes better decisions in the future. And, and you know, I can't speak for people that have like bipolar disorder and that type sure. of thing. Like, I mean, I, I know. Like, I, if I was in Ronaldo's spot, but again, I, I can't speak to that because I don't have those, you know, the, whatever they call it, the, what's the word I'm looking for, Robbie, that, um, condition I, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would have jolted back. Like, who are you? I mean, you know, everybody, I'm the most popular announcer, but you know, that's not Ronaldo's way. He's not going to go right. back and retaliate on social media. Like that's how I would have done it. But, uh, but if I was playing the role of Corey Graves. I wanted to do that. I would have like asked Ronaldo, "Hey, you know, are you cool with this?" And if he would have said no, we would have found another way. I so, think if he would have asked him, though, he would have been fine with it because he would have known it was a work. Yeah, I, I think yeah, he felt yeah. personally attacked. You know what I mean? And and that wasn't just on any show. That was a big show. Yeah, not well, the and, big and, show. And and then you know, I mean, Beth Phoenix, not the best in the world. Nigel McGuinness, you know, he's got a British accent. So like right. Corey Graves thinking they should speak more. Like it's like, come on, Graves. So you're taking a shot at Ronaldo big time there because. It's not like you had Jr. and the King or, you know, Tony Schiavone sitting next to tomorrow trying to get more time. It would have been like during the Attitude Era if Jerry the King Lawler just like 
crapped all over Jim Ross and he's like, we need to hear more of what Michael Cole has to say when Michael yeah. Cole was new. Because Michael Cole has definitely grown into a great announcer, whatever people want to say about him. But he, he really wasn't good when he started. It just it wouldn't have made sense. And it would have just been a weird thing, especially if JR would have reacted the same way. So I, I think we have to compare things apples to apples like that. And at the end of the day, it's just like I said, it's it's, an, it's unfortunate. Well, Rob, great discussion. It's great to be back um, having you, Virtue and Vice, here on TheBigVetoBrand.com. Right. So take it away, man. Tell everybody where they can see you. I'll tell everyone something else, too. If you and Vito need to have a sit-down conversation at any point, I, I will volunteer to be a neutral party. It doesn't have to be soon, but I'm saying I think eventually you guys are going to have to talk about this because, you, dude, you're on his network. I mean, well, you're literally— That's you're, because of Noel. And Noel okay. had no idea he was going to be an idiot like that. I, I know that. But I, I'm saying your friendship with Noel, I, I really think it's important that you guys do have a sit down at some point, uh, just for the sake of the holidays, for the new year. And maybe you have, maybe just for you to say what you have to say. I don't know. He but, succumbed, like he got there, he shook everybody's hand when he got there, like any indie worker would do. And the whole idea was we're going in and the, the army's going over, we're going to be heels. And, you know, we hear the booker going, no, 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 no. Our guys have to go over. Our AIW trainees have to go over. This is – UXWA is like their NXT. And, and I, you know, that changed everything. And Vito had to turn into, yes, sir, we'll do it. Yep, yep. And more importantly, it's because he had to be the baby because he had to go sell merch. Because right – sitting right by the door, right? We bring Vito in. We understand the gimmick, right? He sits by the door and people come in. He uh, autographs. Some kid, the first person through the door had gave Vito a hundred bucks to sign all of his Vito memorabilia. Big Vito mark. Vito turned like that's when Vito turned on me, right there. Because now he's thinking, oh, I'm supposed to be heel. Well, after intermission, I got to come back out here. I better be babyface. So you're saying he sold out? Basically, to sell his merch, right? Wow. But whatever, whatever. Okay. Well, that's we'll definitely see. something we're gonna have Maybe. to explore. Uh, right. Anyways, guys, on a, on a happier note, uh, you guys can always come debate with me on Twitter at NoDQVice. I'm always willing to have any kind of debate, any kind of discussion. Let me know, am I the smartest guy in the room, or just let me know if you think I'm an asshole. Uh, either is fine. Uh, I'm open to both opinions. Uh, and again, ver not to bring up those wounds again, Virtue, but why don't you go ahead and take it away, take us home. Well, obviously, you can follow me on Twitter at NoDQ underscore Virtue. You can see Rob and I also over on the NoDQ Review Follow me on Facebook, nodq.com slash virtue. Um, Andres wants to do another video soon, uh, Rob, so we got to go over there to Andre 